all my favorite ways, but sometimes we have to shake it up a little bit. And so I'm gonna invite you to just kind of bounce. And if you're more comfortable in a chair or holding on to a chair, you can hold on to the chair and bounce too. We're just gonna start moving connected tissue in our body. And I also invite you, if you feel comfortable, maybe close the eyes or very soft eyes, put that chin back. Can you feel it? We're going to be stopping in just a minute. And if the arms aren't, if they're hanging out in front like this, it means our shoulders are forward. So let's try to open the shoulders and still dangle on so that when we stop, and we're going to stop real soon because I've had just about enough. <laughs> Teacher says, you can do whatever you want in this class, by the way. Yes, yes. So let's stop. And if you're comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes and just notice. Notice the body, notice the sensations. You said that we've got a little more energy flowing, and in yoga we call it prana, a life force. not comfortable with closed eyes, just soft eyes and a neutral space to look at the floor. Thinking about positioning the head, maybe tucking the chin back so the earlobes, even though you can't see them, are positioned over the shoulders. Shoulders, we've opened our shoulders and the shoulder blades are we're flattening and rolling down the back body. Bringing awareness to the nostrils. And without changing the breath, just noticing the inhale and the exhale. No rush, no effort, just the everyday breath. Whenever you're ready, I invite you to begin to deepen that breath, maybe to the count of four. If that's not possible, pick a number. Inhaling, maybe to the count of four, and exhaling, making that count the same number. We'll do this two more times. We don't rush the breath. So natural pause at the end of the exhale. Inhaling long and deep to the number, whatever you pick for is a good number for me. Exhaling to the count of four, slowly drawing in the lower abdomen, get rid of all stale air. And one more time. Softly opening our eyes and beginning our practice. We're going to use that deeper breathing whenever possible uh, throughout the practice. I might coach you, inhale, exhale. If that doesn't feel right for you, you're welcome to breathe. You can exhale when I say inhale. As long as you're following the breath with the movement, it makes yoga much um, more mindful, which is really what the practice is all about. So we're going to start with a, a, a a, a warrior one flow. And in warrior one, we can step back. The shorter the step, the, the easier. And if you step back a little further, it gets a little more challenging. If you step back a little further, it gets a little more challenging. This is where the, I said the belly button, it may be at the diameter, because we're not going to try to force things. But our back foot, it's easier if it's a little wider. So distance this way, width between the front and the back foot makes it a little easier to find this stance. Um, some people tell you to put it heel, you know, ball line, heel to heel, well, forget that, okay? It's totally up to you. This, this twerks the hips a little too much um, when you bring the heels in alignment, so I'm all for not twerking my hips. We'll take that front uh, foot and we're gonna turn just slightly inward so that when we bend our knee, He's tracking over that baby toe. And then in a warrior one, we usually have our arms up. Let's lift from using the 
lateral muscles of the body, lifting up that way, and then just swinging them up. Without throwing our shoulders up. So we're keeping our shoulders down. And if that doesn't feel good, another way we can do it is bring those elbows down. You'll really feel those shoulder blades connecting um, like they were kissing the spine and rolling down the back body. So this is warrior one, but we're gonna play with warrior one. So I'm gonna not step as wide. I'm gonna keep it a little center. I'm gonna move that back foot up a little bit. And we're gonna start perhaps with the hands together at our heart space. And as we inhale, we're gonna open wide. Bend that front knee. As we exhale, we'll straighten that knee. Or look down when we bend our knee. We want to still see half of the foot and all the toes. So if the knee gets a track over the toes, it's too much on the kneecap. So that knee, still see the toes, sort of cheating, looking. There's no cheating, it's just fun to play with. Exhale, straight. Let me do this one more time. This involves a back bend, you need a more neutral spine, just bring the chest forward more. You can still do the same more you want, you can still be balanced between that front foot and that back foot. The more upright you are, the more of a back bend you'll get. So you'll have to play with it. We're gonna do this one more time. Inhale and bend. Exhale and straighten. And we're gonna add it all together with the inhale and bring those arms up if the shoulders allow. And as we exhale, we're going to come forward so that the front part of our body is resting on the thigh. And just feel that low back stretching out. I invite you to do that. You can keep the chin up. Or if the head allows and the neck allows, you can allow the, the um, top of the head to, to go towards the floor. For some people, it makes them feel dizzy. If you have blood coming, you should keep the chin up. Finding what works best for you this evening. And just feeling, feeling balance between that front foot and that back foot. Who's waiting on the back edge of that back foot? Feeling that thigh, are we feeling it, ladies? The knee is bent, yes. So on our next inhale, and if you want, you can always bring the hands to the thigh first to raise yourself up, or you can just use your core strength. You're gonna take a nice deep breath. And then we're going to engage that lower abdomen and come up. And again, if you wanted to, you could put the hands here and come up. And then hands to heart. And then let's try it on the other side. And go the other way. Okay. So, again, four in one typically is a little wider. But for this, it's more of a flow. I'm not going to make it as, as long of a Ooh, I'm slipping on this nice, nicely polished wood. Okay, so. Woo, I am slipping. It's, oh. it's the thing underneath is slipping. I know, it's my okay. blankie. It's, it's my blankie. blankie. Blankie's coming out. Yeah, that's what's sliding. Well, you know, they just had um, something here in this building, and so they cleaned it all and polished it up nice. I think it was a wedding or something. And so... Yeah, it's slippery now. Okay, so we're doing the other leg, right? Okay, y'all switch legs. Let's do this. You can do this behind the chair too uh, for some support. You do warriors standing behind the chair. You can also do a warrior one in the chair. And excuse me for just a minute, ladies. I'm letting you stay in that position. If you need to, you can back off. But you can do a warrior one in the chair by sliding towards the end if you don't want to get up. And you would raise up, you would be flowing down, you would be flowing down. So one leg is, I'm back behind you, and it's kind of at a diagonal, just showing that it can be done a lot of different ways. So let's begin. We're going to start with the flow of widening. Start with the hands towards the heart center, and you bring the elbows together. If you don't have anything in the way, which I don't, or not, so hands to the heart is perfectly fine. As we inhale, I'm going to tilt the big toe just a little bit in so that when we bend our knees, tracking to the little toe. Is that good for everybody? 
So inhale and bend, exhale and straighten. Straighten that front leg. Inhale and bend. You feel perfectly balanced. This is the more you want to flow. Between that front and the back leg, and again, if you need less curvature in the back, you just push the chest forward rather than warm up leg. I'm moving with my breath at my own pace. I'm taking my time after I exhale instead of rushing it. I'll do this one more time. And then we're going to take it up or not. Or not, it's always your choice. Again, more um, <clears throat> neutral spine, you would be leaning a little bit more forward in the chest. Still have a nice long spine. Exhale, we're going to fold forward. And again, chin up if it makes you feel dizzy. If you don't want to, uh, hands to the floor, you can put them on your thigh, just not on the kneecap itself. Or crown of the head towards the floor, whatever feels best for you. And feel yourself balanced. Shift your weight a little bit, perhaps. Make sure your balance is a strong pose between the front and the back foot. Whether you're choosing to do this in a chair, behind the chair, or on a mat. And we're going to stay here for a little while just to kind of build some strength in that uh, front thigh. We need that strength to get out of bed, to get out of chairs, to get up off the floor. And on our next inhale, we're going to take a nice deep inhale. We're going to then Pull in the belly, the ribs, and come all the way up. Woo! Exhale, hands to heart. Right. And shake it out. Move that connective tissue. Move it however it feels good. We can be kids. I don't care. So half the fun, I'm a dancer, or that was always my passion was dancing. And, and uh, half the fun was learning new dances and not getting it right, like square dancing, going the wrong way. And so I'm going, yeah, I just laughed at myself. So you got to have a sense of humor with yoga, too, because some things are easy to do, some things aren't. All right. So we're going to find Tadasana one more time. That is the foundation for all yoga and feet under the hip bones. We're going to think about really good posture, and the best way if you're slumped shouldered like I am is to turn those hands, palms to the front, and what it does is it opens the shoulders and pulls those shoulder blades down the back body. You tuck that chin back, go tall from the crown of the head. And we're going to relax this, and as we inhale, we're going to float those arms up and maybe come to the balls of the feet. Exhale, we're going to come down and sweep like a big flower or a big happy face. Inhale up, exhale down, switch hands in front. And give you a lot to think about, or not. And you can do this. Thank you. Bend it over. Yes, I'm okay. folding. Watch my glutes. My okay. glutes are going back as if I was trying to find a chair. So okay. we're actually incorporating a balanced pose with the chair and trying to remember which arm goes in front and not repeated. So there you go. There you go. Just feel it on your own one more time. If you're in a chair, you don't have to come onto a balance, or you can choose to stand behind and just you. Hold on one hand on the chair and swing one arm and then go to the other side and swing the other arm like this. Or you can do it just like this from a chair and not do the balance point, but I invite you to at least come onto the balls of the feet and give the feet some exercise. Last one. Woo, anybody feeling hot now? Not yet? <sighs> okay, let's shake it out a little bit. We've done a lot to our legs. We've got a little bit of balance. And so we're gonna now spread our feet about these outer hips. And I am going to take off this jacket because I have got a lot of heat built up in my body. 
And we're going to do a very simple twist. We're just going to swing the arms up the body. We can do that from a chair too. We would just scoot further forward in the chair and swing. You may not be able to swing as far, but you could just want to get a nice little twist in. We're moving our spine in all directions. In a warrior pose, as we're doing back bends, but we also did a forward bend when we came forward over that front knee and held it. So it can be done anyway. This is just settling us down. If you're comfortable the challenge, I invite you. You can also do it just by holding opposite elbows. You can, if you want to get more dramatic, Whichever direction you're swinging towards, the opposite foot is going to lift off, so you have to ball the foot. And again, finding just a little bit of ease. And then finding Tadasana or Mountain Pose one more time, so bring those feet. Let's see if we can lift our toes and try to spread them because mine seem to be growing together somehow. Yeah, and then we're going to take one foot out to the side with the toes on the ground. Yes, feel a nice stretch, those feet, those ankles that support us. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to try a warrior two. I'm just going to change it up. In a warrior one, where we've got our arms are facing forward, in a warrior two, we're facing sideways. So I'm going to have a front foot. And again, the length makes it easier. You have less of a bend. In this particular one, it helps to imagine a line between the heel and the um, arch or the instep of that back foot. I'm going to turn my foot in just a little bit so that when I do bend my knee, it's going to be pointing towards that front pinky. And I want to make sure I'm comfortable here. If I have to, I'll adjust any way I need to to feel comfortable. I'm going to raise the arms up. Now, as I exhale, I'm going to bring the hands to my heart center. Inhale, I'm going to flow in the warrior two. So we're, the arms are going to come in front of that front leg. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. It's all a learning process. Exhale. Straighten that leg. Bring your hands to the heart. I'm just imagining our heart expanding, moving with the breath. Inhale, extending. That's typical in yoga. We can make it our own practice. And one more time. This time we're going to kind of hang out here for just a second. <clears throat> We're going to stretch the side body. I'm going to take this back hand and I'm going to place it on my thigh. I'm going to take the front hand and turn the wrist so the palm is facing up. As I inhale, I'm going to bring it up. My knee is bent in the front. All right, deep bend. How does that feel? Can you feel the stretch? Only go as far as is comfortable for you. And let's take a couple of breaths here. This is called Exalted Warrior. It goes by different names depending on your tradition. This can also be done from a chair, but you can do a warrior too. Whenever you're ready, you can just release that arm and just kind of shake it out, ladies. So I'm just showing how you would do a warrior two from a chair. And again, you're going to get near the end. This would be a warrior two, and this would be Exalted Warrior. Shook it out, and of course, we get to balance the body. We're going to go to the other side. And again, you know, you'll see classical stuff that looks like this. We don't have to go there. We are classical. We get to a certain age. We want to challenge ourselves. That's fine. Just see how it feels. And again, I want to kind of think about my heel going towards the instep. I may turn this back foot. It can be parallel to the back edge of the mat. Whatever feels most comfortable. Bend that knee, but I'll make sure I can see at least half on the top of my foot and all my toes and bring the arms out. And then I'm going to look out over that front middle finger. I don't know what that finger is about. Yes, it's just roll your shoulders down. 
two side, two side. And then we're gonna flow over it. And exhale, and bring those hands to the heart. Inhale and come back. And move with the breath. Use energy just extending out from those fingertips. Unless it hurts. Anything hurts, you don't do it. There's no judgment. We're just adding a little ease here. We'll do this one more time. Good job, ladies. We we'll have a pause for a moment. We're going to take that back hand and place it on the thigh. We're going to turn the palm up by the hand. And then we go into an exalted warrior. You feel that stretch on the side body. It's even loud. You can look up the hand. You can keep your head in neutral. It's up to you. One more breath here. And then we'll release. Step forward, shake it out a little bit. So we basically, my goal in all of my classes is to try to move the spine in all directions. That would be straight is one direction, which is Tadasana. Forward bend and forward could be further. This counts as a forward bend. Back bend is a little arch in the back. Sun, we did that. Then we with the war, exalted war and we do the other side. So basically, I have to do a little twist. So we're ready to come down to the floor and um, still stay in your chair for a lot of this, or you may want to get on the floor and get on the mat. So I'm going to come to the top third of mine. And see, you've already gotten down. Good idea. <laughs> yeah, let's not have any controversy. Let's just get down however it feels good. Okay. We're gonna do a little balance pose here. And if you're still in the chair, this is called boat pose, or Navasana is the Sanskrit word for it. So we're gonna um, bring those heels back. We're gonna keep our knees together. It makes it much easier. We're just gonna kind of lean back. There's sits bones here. We're just going just beyond the sits bones. And then whenever you're ready, we're well, just gonna try this. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> don't make me laugh, I'm gonna fall. Okay, hey, maybe release the hands or not. <laughs> oh yeah, that was good, wasn't it? How'd you like that? Did you feel the core? Uh -huh. <laughs> so this can also be done, and I'm just taking a break for John. This can be done from the chair if you want. So you would just lean back, you're towards the edge of the chair, not to fall out. Just lift those legs. It's a real challenge. Let's do this one more time, and then we're gonna come down to the floor for the good stuff. Okay, good job. So in picture poses, you'll see the legs perfectly straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is happening. I don't know how this is happening. I haven't done this in forever. So, miracles, it's there. <laughs> Yay! Oh, you fell and didn't hurt yourself, yes. And, and body sounds do come with yoga. Just telling you. Sorry. There's no, no apologies. Oh, God. oh my gosh, it's so funny. I'm not going to go into those stories. Though. Okay, so I'm going to turn this way just so my booty is not facing the camera. We're going to walk ourselves down. And um, both pose is a pose that is not only a balanced pose, but it's also a core strengthener. And a strong core helps support our backs. And I'm gonna invite you to do this thing called dead bug. So ladies, y'all might wanna take a break and turn your mat sideways so that, not so that y'all are on top of each other, like one head going this way and one head going that way. Turn your mat sideways, cause that way you can roll your head and look at me without doing sit-ups. Bring it at an angle maybe. Just a little angle. There you go. Man, you are strong. I am so impressed. I want to be just like you. <laughs> I want those pants too. Those are the coolest pants I ever saw. So this particular pose, and we can do it from the chair. I'll try to take a break and do it from the chair and let y'all get going with this. So we're going to get onto our backs when we're ready. You can roll your head and watch me at first. We're going to lift both feet off the floor. 
The feet aren't stuck together or the knees. What I'm gonna do is as I inhale, I'm going to straighten one leg and bring the opposite arm overhead. Exhale and switch. I'm gonna flex that foot of the straight leg that's hovering above the floor just to help. Use your breath just how you feel you need to. So my heel is not hitting the floor. You can do this from a chair. Y'all keep going when you're ready to stop, stop and just close your eyes. And find out it's gonna be very hard to do it from a chair. Might be easier to do it standing. So one stand, no, it's gonna be easier from the chair. You got the general idea, we're just gonna move opposite arms and legs. So let's take a little break. Bring the feet to the floor. Close the eyes for a moment. And just notice how you're feeling. Bringing awareness maybe to even the back of the neck. I know when I do core work, my neck curve gets exaggerated. So what I would do is just push my chin back, tuck my chin back, and maybe rock my head slowly side to side. Or restore some weight to the back of my neck. Do one more pose with the back. It's called a bridge pose. It is a back bend. And I'm going to show you in breath work how to keep it from being a back bend and more of a neutral spine. So normally when we do bridge, as we inhale, we lift, which causes an exaggerated curve in your low back. The way to keep a more neutral spine and as you exhale, you bring the hips back down. It's not how high you go. You're pressing into your feet, you're engaging your thighs, but let's try it with exhale. So if I exhale first, with the glutes tight, my spine is in a neutral position. I don't have an exaggerated back bend. So I invite you to choose which felt best. We're gonna flow with the breath. Either on an inhale we come up, we're gonna get more of a back bend or exhale. And we would inhale and articulate down the spine as we come down, bring the hips down. And then if you want, and only if it feels good. We can add the arms. You may have had enough arms so far, but we can add the arms up. And over as we exhale up or inhale up. As we come down, we bring the arms and the hips down together. Do this maybe one more time or not. When you finish, I invite you to bring both knees in towards your chest to compensate and counterbalance those back bends. You can hold on to a shin with each hand, each hand grabbing the shin, or you can hold behind the thighs if that feels better. Keeping those elbows tucked and bent and close to the body. Giving the hips and the back a nice little mini massage as we counterpose what we've done earlier in bridge. And also dead bog. The core isn't super strong, we're going to get more of an arch in the back. Let's pause in neutral 
and knees towards the chest. Knees can be closer together. We'll put our hands, a hand on each knee. And as I inhale, I'm gonna straighten my arms. So my knees float above my pelvis. As I exhale, I'm gonna widen those knees and circle them around to the chest again. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bring them wide and around to the chest. Elbows are bent at the chest. When we inhale, the arms straighten. We stay straight as we bring those knees wide. We begin to bend as those knees come towards the chest. On the exhale, or if it doesn't feel good, don't listen to me. Just close your eyes and follow your breath. Inhale for me, arms are long. Exhale, I widen those knees and bring them back to the chest. Closing the eyes, perhaps one or two more times, and just noticing how that feels, just sensing outside the body, proprioception without vision. And maybe we'll finish with the arms straight. So we're going to take, and we're going to bring one foot down to the mat, then the other, and we're going to widen these feet so that they're on the edges of our mat and play to the camera. We're going to bring the arms wide out from the shoulders, palms up, and just to invite some more um, motion in the neck, loosening up the neck. I'm going to take a nice inhale, and as I exhale, my knees will flop towards one side and my head will roll opposite. I'm not rushing the breath, but I'll inhale, head, knees to center. And then exhale, we drop the knees to the other side, the head rolls opposite. So moving at your own pace. And I can't exactly translate this into a chair. I can get on the floor. This is wonderful. It gives you a little hip massage. You don't, your knees don't have to flop all the way over, or they can if that feels best for you, but it can be more subtle. Knees just barely going over. So it's just a mini twist, and again, involving the neck. Whenever you're ready, we're going to find neutral. Head in the center, knees still wide. We're going to inhale those arms up to the ceiling. Arms are kind of facing each other. We're going to grab opposite elbows so we create the picture frame above our chest. And this time, the head's going to follow the knees. Earlier, the head was going opposite. So, I'll take a nice, comfortably deep inhale, and when I exhale, my head and knees go one way, and then I tilt the picture frame the opposite way. It doesn't have to go far. And then I inhale, head, knees, and picture frame, arms to center, and follow my breath. Exhale, picture frame is going opposite from the head and the knees. It can be very subtle. I'm going to move with the breath. We do this one more time, both sides. And when you're finished, head, picture frame, and knees are center. We're going to release the hands. We're going to come up onto the side of our body. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a nice long line and we're going to flex both feet. So if we flex our feet, that becomes our stability, right? We can rest our head on the upper arm. We can make a bend the elbow if that feels better. I'm gonna, just so I can watch y'all, no judgment, no judgment here, but you can make sure you don't hurt yourself. So I'm gonna have my top arm is gonna be at my chest. 
Well, as I inhale, I'm gonna lift that top leg and it's not about how high, but you're gonna feel it in your glutes. As I exhale, I'll bring it down. I'm gonna move with the breath at my own pace. And again, it's not how high you go. We're just doing stuff that is gonna ultimately support and protect the back, building muscle around the glutes buttocks, legs, just one more time. And we're gonna roll over onto our bellies. And I'm going to bend my right arm, turn my head to the right, rest my head on my hand maybe. And I'm gonna take my left leg I'm sorry, my head's to the left, I'm gonna take, whichever way your head is facing, bend the knee that's on that side and see if you can grab onto the front of your foot. We're gonna stretch out our hamstring. If that isn't happening today, maybe grab pant leg. And pant leg, Oops. not happening. Okay, that's all right. Just bend it where you can and don't worry about it. Just relax into it. And then we're gonna move to the other side to do those leg lifts. And try to do um, the hamstring. That's what I was trying to do is, is not stretch the hamstrings, but the quads. So um, next time, if I think about it, I'll bring a strap for you and we can strap you. Just don't want you to pull too far. But anyhow, so we're gonna start with the feet flexed and we're in a nice long straight line on our mat. And we're going to inhale and lift. And it doesn't have to be high. We're going to keep that foot flexed. Nice job. We won't rush it. Let's see if we can pause at the top of the inhale. Leave it up for a second. Or not. Or not gives you the choice. Really a little more intensity into this lift. And we're using our quadriceps to lift this leg. Maybe one more time. And then perhaps rolling on to the belly. <clears throat> we're gonna try to stretch the quad on the other side. If it doesn't work, you can't reach the foot. That's fine, just bend the leg. <clears throat> or grab a uh, Grab your pant bottom. You can even lift your head. Oh, look at that. See, one side was a lot more flexible than the other. Right? No, that's 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 exactly the way it happens, is because we tend to favor, we're stronger on one side of our body. Okay. Yeah. Now so so with a yoga practice, what'll happen is your body will begin to even out. And as the body even now evens out, so does the mind. Well, it's attached to our body. That's why we work both sides of the body, both sides of the brain. Okay, I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna roll over onto my side one more time and I'm gonna bend my knees as if I was in fetal position. I'm gonna take my hands out straight out from my chest and it's gonna be palm to palm. And again, this is gonna involve some neck. So my straight out from the chest. And I'm gonna watch this top thumb. I'm gonna inhale it up and over. It may not go all the way over, it may go halfway. I'm gonna try to let my head roll. And as I exhale, I'm gonna bring it all the way back, palm to palm, moving with my breath. This helps you to lengthen the breath. It opens the chest up. Helps relieve tension in the neck. Do this one more time. 
It feels good. If you want, you can play with the breath and pause at the top of the inhale. I was just kidding. Just one more time. And when you're finished, you can roll over to the other side in fetal position and balance the body. So again, my hands are, or my arm is straight out from my chest, palm to palm. I'm keeping my eyes just softly open. I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes since you now know what we're doing here. Um, but if you're uncomfortable at first, keep the eyes open. We're gonna watch this top thumb. We're gonna feel how that feels in the body. And as we exhale, we bring it back. And then if you're comfortable with this movement, close the eyes and just sense it. Let the head roll. You don't have to have vision to feel the movement in space. And again, we're just kind of floating everything up and over. Not rushing it. I love to pause at the top of the inhale before I exhale. And last one. When you're finished, I invite you to roll over onto your backs and have bent knees if the back is cranky. So Shavasana can put our feet wider and let the knees go together. This is a modification. Traditionally, the legs are out long, the toes flop to the side. If you happen to have a blanket, you might want to cover yourself. I will close the doors for Shavasana to keep you from being too chilled. I'm going to bring a blanket. Does anybody trust my blankets don't have germs? They were washed. Anybody want a blanket? I'm pretty. Want a blanket? It's cozy. Okay, so Shavasana can also be done from a chair, in which case you would scoop back and let the spine be fully supported on the chair. <clears throat> palms up is the gesture of receiving, palms down is a grounding gesture. If you're on your back, it helps to open the arms and have them long and away from the body to flatten the shoulder blades on the mat. But in the chair, that's not important. This is your time to rest, relax, restore, renew. Let the body fully integrate the earlier movements. Let's bring awareness to the right foot. The right foot only. Just sensing the right foot. And switching our awareness from the right foot to the left foot. I'm sorry, my virtual students, that I had to get up and close the doors because it is a little chilly in here. We're taking our awareness from the left foot over to the right leg, from the ankle up to the top of the thigh. Just bringing our awareness to the right leg from ankle to the top of the thigh, maybe feeling it growing heavy as it relaxes.
And gently shifting awareness from that right leg to the left leg. Oh, I guess we've already done that. We're going to move up to the hips, both hips, bringing all of our awareness to both hips. And to the buttocks, those glutes, very strong muscles. The buttocks have a lot of muscles in them. And just feeling those hips and those glutes relaxing. Moving our attention up to the lower abdomen and the low back. Feeling a sense of ease just by bringing our awareness to that body part. Moving up to the mid-back, the thoracic spine area, and the corresponding area of the upper abdomen. Feeling awareness of that nice chunk of the body. Feeling it soften. Moving upwards to the shoulders and the upper back. Now in your mind to focus on those body parts. And with every effortless breath, feeling the body parts soften, release, let go. And then shifting awareness over to the right arm. And the shoulder down to the fingertips. Allowing the right arm, the right hand to go limp. Maybe it feels a little heavier as it relaxes completely. And then shifting awareness over to the left arm from where it meets the shoulder all the way down to the fingertips. Bringing awareness to the pit of the throat. Letting our focus lay there and rest there. That is the seat of our communication. Feeling that throat soften. And the back of the neck softens. Moving our attention upwards to the scalp. And 
feeling the scalp letting go, just being at complete ease. The back of the head. Moving up to the forehead, feeling it go loose and relax. Taking our focus to the eyes, just feeling those eyes resting softly, eyelids resting on the eyeball surface and all those muscles around the eyes and behind the eyes, going loose and lax. And shifting awareness from the eyes to the cheeks, feeling them soften. The jaw relaxes completely, just simply separating the teeth slightly. And beginning to make subtle movements, maybe wiggling fingers and toes, maybe even bending at the elbow and letting the hand circle the wrists. Invite you to open the mouth wide as if you were yawning to stretch the face. It helps reset the brain. If you're on the floor and the legs are out long, I invite you to bend the knees. If the knees are already bent, that's awesome. And then Roll over onto your side in fetal position if you're in a chair and not on the floor. Again, finding even greater relaxation. Feeling the chair fully supporting you. For those on the ground, feeling the ground fully connected to the body and the body connected to the energy of the earth. Maybe fluttering the eyelids and the soft eyes for those on the ground. I invite you to take your top hand and perhaps the bottom elbow to gently push yourself up to a comfortable seated position. No rush, take your time, soft eyes. And in closing, if you care to join me, extend our arms out in front and palms up. Doesn't feel good, you can do palms down, but palms up. Thinking about all the many blessings and perhaps what 2020 has for me. It's an appreciation of hugs more than gathering with like-minded people, but thinking about all of our blessings and um, especially thinking about perhaps some of the wonderful things the new year has in store for us. Many, many blessings. Inhaling and opening those arms wide, maybe back behind you, stretching and opening that heart space. And as we exhale, we're gonna bring the arms slowly wide back to the front right arm on top of the left and grab opposite shoulders. We're giving ourselves a nice hug, maybe lifting a soft gaze upwards and exhaling chin to chest. And 
a well-deserved hug for a wonderful yoga practice. This is just for you. And as we inhale, we'll bring the head back to center, release the arms to the front. When we're ready, we'll inhale wide once more. Now really stretch that front body. And as we exhale, wide arms back to the front, left on top of the right. Crossing over, grabbing opposite shoulders, letting the elbows relax down. Maybe inhaling and tilting the head upwards towards the ceiling, exhaling chin to chest. Maybe taking a moment to think of other loved ones, sending our love, maybe prayers, maybe just pure positive thoughts to other people, places, and things. And inhaling the head back to center, releasing those arms to the front. We bring our hands together and bring them to our heart center. Namaste. Thank you for sharing that practice this evening. Thank you all who joined us virtually. Have a wonderful evening. And if there was any sense of peace you had, please take it with you.